Hey, it's Tom from Tom's Tunes. Today we're tackling a project that applies to fishing boats, pontoon boats, everything when we're working with gauges. What's wrong? <sighs> I've bent over this table for like the last 20 minutes. I thought I'd try 39. This whole time, I could have just been kneeling here and I would have been a lot more comfortable. Today, I am rigging a gauge panel with Faria Chesapeake gauges for a Mercury. It's a brand new 115, but this will apply to older model Mercuries as well. I have my large console from pontoonstuff.com. In the future and in the past, there have been and there will be gauge panels pre-made. We haven't been able to get them for a while now from pontoonstuff.com, so I've made my own. Uh, just be careful that some of the materials you get can be pretty brittle, but what, essentially what we've done is cut a panel of a, a UV resistant plastic and this is going to fit in here. And what we have is a three and three eighths inch hole for our speedometer. This is a GPS speedometer. And then we have three two inch gauges. We're going to do our depth finder and our voltage and fuel in those two inch holes. So rem remember three and three eighths. It's a goofy size hole saw and then we have a two inch hole straightforward for those. These are our gauges that we're gonna be rigging today. So again, this is the Chesapeake style in white. So it's a chrome bezel with a white face. And this is a GPS uh, speedometer. So all I have to do is hook power to it. It's got a GPS puck built in. It's gonna give me way more accurate uh, speed than other options like the traditional that feeds off of your motor. We also have fuel gauge, volt gauge, and we're running a depth sounder here. The other component that's big on this, and you could splice into what you have, but this is the Mercury kit for our gauge harness. So this is for wiring in analog gauges, not your smart craft or other digital gauges. I'll put this part number below, but you can pause now and write that down. It's just a 30 or $40 part, but it uh, looks like is this. We have pigtails that are all labeled for different gauges. Gray is labeled for tack. We're not rigging a tachometer on this boat because it's getting the vessel view uh, app on their phone. So it's gonna get their tack there for tuning in the prop and everything. This is my switch on power or key on power, which is purple. We're gonna use that for sure. We're gonna use our ground, which is the black wire. And then we would, if we wanted to, trim indicator, we have a oil alarm, uh, and then we also have a water temperature. So these would go to other analog gauges. So really what we're gonna focus on in this case is our Keon power or switch 12 volt power, the purple and the black ground. Everything else is gonna get just taped off so it can't create any current and we'll tape them off together so that they can't interrupt anything else we're doing. Conveniently, this big plug is gonna plug right into, on my ignition harness for my motor, the plug-in that says gauges. It says it right on it. It's already run underneath my helm. I'm gonna do all of this work, get it installed, so all I have to do when I put the helm on is plug this into my ignition harness. To get started here, this is gonna be my face, so I'm gonna flip this over, and I'm gonna go ahead and install each of these gauges in their respective hole before I do any wiring. So we've got our speedometer that's gonna slide in. And the way that all of these work, basically gonna all be the same in terms of how they install. You will need either a ratchet or a screwdriver with a 5 16 and or a 3 8 inch deep well socket. But I'm just gonna slide this on. And the way that this works is the gauge is here in position. This is basically just going to sandwich the gauge into my plastic. I'll fine tune the angle so it's as vertical and as possible lined up, but I'm gonna go ahead and set this down. And now I need to secure this black plastic piece to the gauge so that everything will be held in place. So you're gonna get a series of washers. It's all brass. We're gonna put a washer on the posts and then you're gonna have a whole bunch of nuts so they're gonna hold everything in place. So I'm gonna put a lock washer on this far post because that's not gonna have any other wires going to it. And then on the back of this speedometer gauge, we have a ground indicator. That's my middle post here. So it says ground on it. 
there's a battery. Sometimes it's gonna be a plus, sometimes it's gonna be, you know, a, a ignition, an I for ignition, that's on this post. And then my signal post, this just also needs to get power from my key on power. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these set. And all I do is put the nut down on the washer, because essentially first I need to tighten down this black plastic piece to the back of the gauge. And these are gonna be 5 16 So we'll go ahead and tighten those down. Before I get them all tight, we'll make sure that that's nice and square. Just gonna eyeball it, that looks really good. So now we can go ahead and tighten them down. Just hand tight, get them snug. We're gonna stack some lock washers on top when we put our wires on. So we have a lock washer on this outside one. The reason I didn't put one here is because I'm gonna put my terminal on, then a lock washer and a nut on top. So this one just doesn't get any wires run to it, so we're gonna leave it be. I'm gonna go through with my other gauges and get them all into position, just the same way I did here. Just make note on the back of each gauge, this is our fuel gauge. This is where my sending wire is labeled. Do not hit that with power. That has to be your sending wire from your fuel tank. So obviously this will get wired a little bit differently. My ground is in the middle. And in this case, it says I for ignition. So that's gonna be where I need to run my key on power to. I wish I knew why the smaller gauge takes the 3 8 inch socket, but I don't know why. Voltage gauge. On the back, it's simply a plus for positive or key on power, and then G for ground. Simple as that. And you'll notice on all of these gauges, we have an extra spade terminal here, just a flat terminal. That is gonna be what gets power to backlighting all of our gauges. So you'll see how we take power and jump it across to all of those backlights. There's a little light bulb inside of here that actually backlights this. Uh, that's already grounded to the other side of the light bulb from your ground. So no need to worry about that. It's simply gonna get power. This is a Faria depth finder. It's a kit, it comes with a transducer, the wiring, and the gauge itself. There's a quick plug-in here that you're gonna have from your transducer coming forward. So this will catch power and ground from the gauges. We'll tie in there. Our depth finder is done other than needing to tie in power and ground here and then plug in. What we're gonna focus on now is getting our harness tied in to our gauges and showing you how to jump those wires across how they need to be set up. I like to think about kind of creating a base gauge that's going to take my power and distribute it out. I have really nice tall terminals on my speedometer. That's gonna make it really easy to do. So we're gonna go ahead and use that as our base gauge. From here, I can run my power and ground piggybacked across to the rest of my gauges. To start, I'm gonna take that 12 volt, that switched 12 volt, that's my key on power. That's gonna go on that power post here. And then I'm gonna take my ground and that's gonna go on the ground post. That's our starting point. The other wires I'm gonna need now are either purple or you could use red, whatever you're comfortable with using. Typically, you're gonna see purple used for power on your gauges, but red would indicate power as well. I need a blue wire. Blue is typically what is jumped across to all of our backlights. Uh, and then I need black wire to make my grounds. So I'm gonna grab those real quick so I can be ready in my connectors, which is just a ring terminal. We're gonna need more of those as well to jump everything across. I get all that stuff on Amazon, believe it or not. It's good quality, it's heat shrink. I've been really happy with it. 
wire tools here. We've got purple wire, black wire, and blue wire, all 16 gauge. So that's gonna be what we need to make this happen. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a little harness for all of my power wires. I need to take power from this post to this post. I need to take power over to my ignition uh, post for my fuel gauge, as well as my ignition post or positive post, key on power posts are all the same for my voltage gauge. And then one more, I need to tie into this depth finder. So I have to take this, and I'm just gonna create a whole bunch of little jumpers to go across to all these different wires. So we're gonna start with one that's gonna jump over to my fuel gauge. And I'm just gonna make it long enough to get from that post over to my eye or ignition post, my positive for my fuel gauge. And then what I need to do is actually jump power to this post. I need to take it back over to my speedometer for my indicator post or my signal post to get that power. Then I also need to take power over to my volt gauge. So this is gonna become one splice here that's gonna tie in to a wire coming across and then we'll stack one more on top. So I'm gonna use a bigger splice connector so that I can make that happen. I'm gonna take my two wires, I've wide them both. I'm gonna twist each end and then twist the two together. Kind of creates a braided effect. I can slide my ring terminal on, crimp it down, shrink it up. That's gonna ride on the eye post, the ignition post of your fuel gauge. We're gonna leave that open and I'm gonna make another jumper now. This is gonna have its own terminal or ring terminal. It's gonna jump power over to my voltage gauge and we're gonna tie in this power for the depth finder. My connector is gonna jump over to my voltage gauge. We're just gonna give it that single smaller ring terminal. Then we're gonna make this one become friends. Here, so this will go on like so. And actually what we can do, this is my power. I'm gonna put my lock washer on, then a nut to finish. We'll go through and tighten everything when we're done. This is gonna join together here and I'm gonna run power up to my depth finder. So we're gonna create another combo. We're gonna stack that there. So that means I can go ahead and put on a lock washer and a nut. We're done playing with that one for now. I have this wire that we're gonna take over and connect in here. So all we need is a spade terminal for that. I've cut that back so it can easily slide in. And now we have power connected to our depth finder. I still gotta hook up my ground, but we'll get there. And then I have one more wire hanging out here. This is gonna run across and give power to the signal on my speedometer. We can go ahead and put on our locking washer and nut. And we have one more thing to do before we tie up this power post, and that is to jump power across. All I need to do is, is take my power wire to jump across to all these posts for my backlight. 
the depth finder is automatically going to be backlit based on our power going into it. So I've got blue wire here. We're just going to start with one end. We'll put a ring terminal on one. And I'm going to show you the way I do this. You could do it however you want. You could even wire these into your navigation lights. All you need to do is have a power running out to supply these with power. But I'm going to make it so when the key is on, the gauges are backlit. That way, whether it's night or not, you're going to have power to the light in the gauge. So I'm going to go ahead and put on my lock washer and a nut for this last post here. And then what I'm going to do is create just a piggyback of my blue wire jumping first to this post, then coming across. We're just going to keep connecting uh, spade terminals to each of these. So first one is going to be relatively short. But I'm going to take my blue wire right off the spool there and splice these two together. This will plug right onto this post. That's on that post. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to jump it across to my fuel gauge and then jump it across to my volt gauge. I do this anytime I bring two wires together to share a splice or a terminal. I wire them and then I twist them. It might be for LEDs under seats, might be LEDs under the bow. It can be for anything that needs power. So we're sharing wires. We can wire them together and join them because all we need is power passing through all these things in order for it to get to our accessories. So basically the power doesn't stop once it hits the first gauge. It's gonna keep passing through those wires that are all connected to get to the next gauge and the next gauge and so on. We'll go to the pink spade terminal just because we have one wire to finish our sequence of wires for the backlights. We can hook this on our fuel gauge post and then when that's cooled, we'll go ahead and put this on our voltage gauge. So now when we hit power, the power is gonna come in from our harness to this post. It's gonna get shared to our backlights. It's also gonna get shared via these purple wires to power all of our other gauges. We're done with our power side of everything. So let's move on to our ground wires and we're gonna do the same thing we just did with the power essentially is I need to get my ground shared from here across to my fuel gauge as well as my volt gauge and my depth finder. We've got that first ground run. I'm gonna put that lock washer and nut on there as well. And then I just need to take this ground wire and get it across and we're just going to splice them in we're going to wire them right into each other to jump them across just like we did the purple wire for the ground or for the power One last time, I'm gonna join these together to put on a ring terminal. And this other end is gonna end up in our ground for our depth finder. And our last connector 
is going to go on this is just a spade connector again i could have butt spliced or bullet connected those there's a bunch of ways we could have done that what's wrong <sighs> I've bent over this table for like the last 20 minutes. I'll try 39. Cool lighter. Where'd you get that? From the gas station. Cut that one back. It makes it fit easier in here. And just like that, we've got power to our depth gauge. Oh, this whole time, I could have just been kneeling here and it would have been a lot more comfortable. We've got all of our connections in place. We have two major steps left to finish here. And that's just tighten everything down and then plug in to our ignition harness and plug in our transducer cable here. I just get them snug. I'm not trying to crank anything or break any. The last thing you wanna do is break one of these posts. Just get them snug down so your connections are solid. Can you win an award for tightening them down? No, there's no award for having your gauges the tightest ever. That's just not award worthy and I will before I'm done I mentioned it before but I will go ahead and tape all of these off and tie them together likely just tie them back to the harness so they're out of the way but want to leave them there so that somebody could use them in the future if they so choose our base gauge is good to go that's our speedometer now I'm going to switch over to that 3 8 because that's what these smaller gauges take I will, there's an important note to make here, is on my fuel gauge in the middle, I am going to have to add the ground from my sending unit is going to go right on this, so I, I will have to take this post off, and we'll show you this when we climb in the boat in a second here, I will have to take this nut off, so I'm not going to tighten it all the way yet, and I'll have to add my sending wire to this post, so I can go ahead and tighten down the power post, that's just fine. Tighten that down right now. And both of our voltage gauge posts are ready to be tightened down. We've got that all set. That's how it looks on the front. The best part about this is how this is going to just run right in. My whole panel will slide in just like that. And now I've got my gauge panel ready to go. When I get it up in the boat, all I have to do is pull this out. I can get my sending wire and ground on my fuel gauge. I can have this dangling below to plug in. My transducer wire can plug in here. It's all gonna come right up through. It's easy to work on when we have it like this rather than any alternative. So I'm gonna go ahead and climb up. We're gonna get ready to put this console together and run those wires. We'll show you how to do the fuel gauge before we're done. We are up in the boat. We've got our console coming together. Now we've got everything fastened down, steering's in, we've run our control cables out. I'm gonna go ahead, this is my fuel sending wire. So you're gonna see them typically as pink or red. This is 18 gauge red with 18 gauge black, two and one. This is connected at the fuel sender as the ground for the sending wire, and then this is the actual sending wire itself. So I just need to put a terminal or a ring terminal on the end. And depending on how your boat was wired, you might already have a big plug that's got your sending wire, um, you know, multi connection plug usually big white or clear plug and that might have all of these wires in one you might have to pick them apart to get your fuel sending wire and ground out you might just have to play with that but we're doing this boat we're wiring it from scratch which i always recommend if you're doing a restoration project just start from scratch so my fuel gauge here in the center i need to hook my ground wire to where my grounds are coming in so i'm going to go ahead and take that nut off and that lock washer slide my ground on lock washer and nut so i've tightened that ground into my ground post and now i still haven't put my lock washer and nut on this sending wire post 
my signal wire. I'm gonna go ahead, put my signal wire on there with a locking washer and nut. We'll tighten that down snug. And that is done. The only thing I need to do now is get my transducer cable. Transducer cable is a simple plug-in. Clicks right into place. And then let's go ahead and run this wire down through. I'm not screwing everything together yet, but I'm gonna show you where this hooks up underneath. This is my big ignition harness that came from the engine. This will hook up to the key switch, my neutral safety, uh, basic stuff there. Got that all taped together. This is indeed your plug that says gauges. So once you know, that is gonna plug right in. And now I have signal and power supplied up to my gauges. I do wanna add one important note on this if you were adding, a lot of you are gonna add a tachometer. Everything goes the same. All you would need to do is take your tach signal wire, which is this gray wire in the bundle, and you would install this on the post, say my tach was right here. I would install this on the signal post for my tach. So my tach sending wire, signal wire would go on, the, on that post. You would also have a positive post for your key on power, a ground post, and a backlight. But all you gotta do is attach that to your tack, go online, find the chart on Faria's website that's gonna give you your pull setting for your tack to make sure you have it right for your motor. And then you are good to go. Our gauges are hooked up. All we have left to do now when we hook the engine up is make sure test with the key on power and make sure everything powers up just right. And we're all set. Let's see how we did. So we've got our depth finder powered up, working. We have our backlights on all of these working. Our fuel tank is empty, so no surprise there. Uh, and then our speedometer, if you saw, when I turn it on, it is gonna cycle through. And then when it finds signal, it'll drop and be ready to go. But it might take a few minutes to get going. This is all set. If you found this video helpful, maybe it gave you the know-how and the tools to go ahead and do this project on your own boat instead of having to spend money at the marina or have somebody else do it for pay. We have super thanks. You can contribute to our channel right here on YouTube or go to www.buymeacoffee.com backslash Tom's Tunes and you can buy us a coffee, maybe a couple for helping you out on this project. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, comment with what you wanna see more of.